ba 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 the dog and pony show yeah, presents uh, Chris and Mike at night. Mm -hmm. We generally talk about movies, but we also talk about them as they relate to pop culture and has and how they relate to our lives and and how they relate to the world. That's basically what makes movies so great. Movies yeah. and meanings, right? It's art right. imitates life, imitates art, imitates the whole roundabout. And you can go into a movie theater and get lost right. for two or three hours and come out of there going, oh boy, I see how that relates to mm -hmm. something I saw the other day. This and that. Uh, I mean, movies like that, there's definitely movies that have shaped like who I am as a person, right? You see somebody being cool in a movie and you're like, I'm that guy now. Boom. Who did you want to be when you were growing up in your life, in your culture, and you saw movies? Who did you point at and go, ooh, I one want to be that guy? One of the first things I said, I want to be that guy, was Top Gun. And then I was like, man, I, I hate flying. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, it might be worth pointing out how absurd that is. Uh, my man, Mike Knight, his dad was in Air Force Intelligence, and he hated flying. It was it was on planes. That was his job, was to be on planes. Hey, yeah, well, what, can I ask you this? How much yeah. can we talk about this now that he's retired? What is the job of an officer in Air Force Intelligence? You say he's on planes. Mm -hmm. Is he collecting uh, satellite imagery or photographs? Or just what's he... Can you give me a sense of what he's doing? So I think probably common knowledge that could go... He, he flew on the RC-135. So I th And the RC stood for, like, reconnaissance. Mm -hmm. That's about it. <laughs> so if something happens on the news, hey... See you guys, I gotta go. Got it, got it, got it. And then he comes back and he's like, yep, I'm here now. I got it. Yeah. So he can disappear for five, six days at a time. If it starts so happening on the news, chances are he's gotta get up and go somewhere. Makes sense. All okay. right, that now I have an idea. So he's on the airplane, taking a look, at photographs, making photographs, probably, assessing information. Probably something That's very, cool. very close to that, man. What was the first thing you saw on TV and you were like, you know what? Live from New York, myself, it's Saturday, Saturday Night Live, October of 75. Uh, I was seven years old. Yeah, and my dad called me down. Uh, I was just a kid. We had just moved into our new house in our subdivision, and it was Saturday night in October. And uh, my dad uh, knew I was a funny kid and all that stuff. And my dad was in advertising, so he knew about mm. culture and things like that, and Playboy and all those things, and <clears throat> all that stuff he had to be on top of as an advertising executive. So he calls me down uh, uh, late on a Saturday night, and everyone else has gone to bed. He's the only one, so he says, I want you to watch this. This is funny. And uh, I was not a sophisticated enough kid at that point, but even at that age, I took a look at that show and I could tell something inside me uh, said, whoa, 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 stop it right here. Something is shifting in a major, yeah. major way. And we're going through something that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And uh, nothing has been the same since. So the two most important things that happened to me as a kid, uh, both happened uh, that year, October 75, <clears throat> Saturday Night Live. And that was when Walter Payton debuted for the Chicago Bears. And basically my entire life has been dealing with those two being just a, a ridiculously dedicated Bears fan and an SNL fan. And then SNL opened the door to everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, film, even as a kid, even as a, a dumb kid, even younger than that, when The Godfather came out, I was obsessed with The Godfather. The silence of it, the way it was lit, the way those people acted was very, very different from anything else in cinema. And so. May your first son be a masculine. Be a masculine. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, so here, here's, here's, here's a question for you. If you're picking and choose who to emulate on TV, right? You going Stallone or you going Arnold? Uh, it's probably Stallone. So you're a Stallone guy? Because the that 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 Rocky movie was about so much. It beat out Taxi Driver in '76 for Best Picture. Wow! Huh? Uh, it beat out it beat out Chris Hazy. The movie Rocky the wrote movie, that movie before. He yes, he did. And before Rocky became a franchise, it was actually mm -hmm. a damn good film. 
And turtles. Uh, he wrote about turtles. <laughs> I, was one, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind marrying me too much. <laughs> and Pauly mm. and the mob guys and all that stuff. But there's a scene in there that covers it all where he's laying in bed and he goes, and he's getting ready to, to fight Creed, and this is in Rocky mm -hmm. One, and he goes, I can, if I can go, I forget exactly, I'm not quoting exactly, it's been a long time, but he goes, uh, if I can hang in 13 rounds with him, then I'll know. He goes, then I'll know. Then I'll know I wasn't just another guy from a yeah. fucking neighborhood. It's the essence of what, uh, film. It's the one thing that connects all of us. And then I'll know. I yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. just another guy from the neighborhood. He, well, he, there was something in him that wanted to be more. And and so that movie was about a lot more than people think. And then, of course, it got franchised and it became this and that. Well, you and compare the, the two franchises, you'd have to go Rocky versus Terminator, and it's a no. It's a no-brainer. You got to go Rocky on that. I was, I was an Arnold kid. Yeah, Arnold was, uh, and he was very, you know, for for Had no basis in reality whatsoever. <laughs> the stuff, the stuff he was doing wasn't connected. Stallone was like, like trench that that Rocky stuff was entrenched in reality. Right. The cyborg stuff. <laughs> any any movie where where Arnold had less than six lines. Yeah. Probably his best stuff. But you know what? Even within those Terminator movies, and I was not a big fan of the first one, but T2, yeah. I this was phenomenal. I just thought the second Terminator blew me away. When he, with uh, part of those, that Robert Patrick was a badass. The the cyborg that yeah, had yeah. kept you know you. Shoot him and he'd come back yeah. together again. The technology was a lot better on Chi Chi. He was running, he was running at like 43 miles an hour, not even like breathing. Yeah, yeah. And there was, and, yeah, and there was a way, and Schwarzenegger, even the, at the, as the cyborg, kind of made it a little funny, like he had little funny moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Um, you gotta give Schwarzenegger credit. I mean, the guy immigrates to the United States, uh, goes to Venice Beach, gets jacked. Have you ever seen Pumping Iron? And he, and he makes Pumping Iron. <laughs> oh put, my God. Which put him on the map. He on that guy, but it was, it was, it was phenomenal. It was I phenomenal. Loved it. Yeah, I, I loved it too. And so, uh, it's a Pumping Iron, it's a documentary, guys, if you don't know about it. I think it's it still out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then he hits it. And so, Give him credit, and then he goes on to become governor of California. I, I would have been president if he was born. If he was born in America, so you and he married a Kennedy, so you have to respect the immigrant. As we talk, I think we talked about before, we call it the immigrant mentality. Yeah, people who come to this country with an open slate and says, "I can make anything happen here." Yeah, yeah. With hard work and dedication and desire, he's walking proof of that. The guy probably would have gotten my vote uh, for president. I, I think a lot of folks, uh, if, you, if you're born in America, raised in America, right, it's, it doesn't matter how pretty your woman is, you've been married to her for X amount of years, you kind of get used to her, then all of a sudden you go outside and somebody else is like, hey, pretty lady. <laughs> and you go, wait, wait, oh, oh, wait a minute. Well, okay, I see what you're saying. So in other words, if you're, you know, I, I know exactly Somebody what you're saying. Somebody comes to America, if, if you're like, from oh here, my if God. If you here, if you're from here, and you don't, you take don't come from home, but you take it all for granted. Oh, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to do this. An <laughs> immigrant walks out of the show here and goes, you guys got everything. And I'm like, what are you talking there's about? There's gold <laughs> hanging off of everything. Yeah, there's gold. And we're like, this is a fucking pain in the ass this place. <laughs> we can play about it. I got to stand in line to vote. Uh, what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Coin is two yeah. bucks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. I thought you were referring to the maid. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you're right. We do take a lot for granted. Um, but you had good parents who told you not to take it for granted. That's why I think you turned out so well. You had a disciplined dad. You had a military yeah. dad. And that, that. I, I didn't really grow up in America like that. So. You didn't? Yeah. You I grew up Americanized, but not in America. You got it. I think yeah, you've got yeah. that immigrant mentality. I think you've got Maybe it. I really, bit. no, I think you do. Because we're going to talk about it. Yeah, All the yeah. stuff you got going on. What's one of your favorite foreign films? Uh... I have a favorite foreign director. I don't have mm. a, um, his name is Sergio Leone and he directed uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Again, mm. Jewish immigrant gangs on the Lower East Side, Robert De Niro, James Woods. 
Uh, he's my band. He did all the cowboy oh, movies with uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, those spaghettis? Yeah, those yeah. spaghetti westerns. He mm. did those too, and he had beautiful music in all those films. Uh, favorite foreign film? I did like. Uh, Oh, I really did enjoy that Korean one before the pandemic that won that award. Parasite. Uh, Parasite, Parasite. Uh, thank you. Oh, I, I heard about it that. Was one. I need to watch it was good. It was fun. Okay. It was really fun. Parasite was really fun. Um, God, there's a good cure. cure the, the Seven Samurai movie was really yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. And then what counts as a foreign film these days? I mean, we, they're all that come to America, so I don't know what's foreign, foreign. director. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you got um, you got uh, who did who did Face Off? <laughs> and he did uh, like Travolta. Killer John Woo. Um, John Woo, well, the birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got a better one for. Well, I, I like John Woo because of the action and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think John Woo did one of the uh, Mission Impossible. I think he did MI too. Yeah, Real, yeah, yeah um, exactly. But uh, here's a guy that's not a, a foreign director. Technically, he's from another country, but he actually got his master's at the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. His name is Ang Lee. And I if I could just say this, uh, I don't know if it counts as a foreign film or not, because when I watch it, I watch it with mm -hmm. uh, them in uh, speaking their language, yeah. but with English subtitles. So I count it as a foreign film. I'd have to that say. Is a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got to read it. <laughs> Pause it. Now I'm chapter two. Um, my favorite, if this counts, Scott, I'll let you judge it. Uh, if this counts, my favorite foreign film by far is uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, They're yeah, re-releasing it. Really it's so beautiful. Re yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. beautiful. Uh, the lead in that is our lead in uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that's Michelle Yao. Michelle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Chow Young Fat. <laughs> Chow Young Fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I just love, I love that movie. I truly love that movie. I, I love what it's about. I love it, how it's about mm -hmm. following your heart, uh, even if it's wild. And uh, and just, I, I, it's so romantic. It's so beautiful. Um, it is fantasy with the way they fly through those yeah, trees yeah. and all that stuff. But I love it. It, 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 trans, it transports me. Um, I'm a big guy, Richie. Are you counting those as foreign films? Because I'll, I'll, I'll go it's, all day with it's Richie. British. It's British. <laughs> cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a drummer. Drummer in London. It's got you. Yeah, <laughs> then, then Scott and I are a huge guy, Richie. <laughs> I mean, we, we talk about Snatch all day long. And we so I think I watched Snatch first, and then I started going through the rest of them, like Lockstock. And uh, I, I actually like Rock and Roller. Yeah, I like I, I like all guy Richie. I, the, that cast and snatch blows me. What do you get with Excalibur? Where is that stone? <laughs> the, uh, where is the stone? I mean, I mean, don't go I mean. I mean. Yeah, no, we're. I mean, how much longer on those sausages? Chuck? Five minutes. It was three minutes. Five minutes ago. Yeah, Jason Statham's great. Yeah, yeah. Brad Pitt, who I think is really funny, and who I've really grown to love it. We talked about this the other night, Scotty. Brad Pitt, as he's gotten older, has gotten funnier, wiser, chosen great pro uh, projects. It was Brad great. a good one. But he could have yeah. really been a D-bag. Yeah. Because he, he just has, like, the looks that could have carried him through his career. But you take, like, him and, like, Leo, and they seem, they seem, they say don't ever meet your idols, but they seem like guys you can actually hang out with. Like, they seem like guys that get it. They get it. That they know that they, they won the lottery. It, and and like, I don't hey, know. All right, this yeah, is yeah, it is what it is. They won the lottery. They must have a team of advisors go through. Apparently, they must be getting sent every you know piece how close of that lottery is? Because you got Sylvester Stallone, and then you got Frank Stallone. <laughs> you got Chris Hemsworth to the store, and you got his brother who I think is like a high school janitor. Frank Stallone <laughs> played the bartender. Played the bartender. <laughs> In Barfly with Mickey Rourke, the guy that won't serve him a drink because he Mickey Rourke plays Charles because he's like mm -hmm. drinks for all my friends, <laughs> for all my friends. And Frank Stallone's the bark on the corner. We need to get the f out of here, man. I cannot serve you. I mean, Is it, you you miss one number on the lottery ticket. It's the difference between hundreds of millions. That's why. Some gas money. That's why I'm still playing. I'm still buying tickets. And <laughs> will, will, and will to the day I die. 
Stephen was in the usual. Everyone has done. Everyone enough. has done something. Stephen was great in the usual specs, suspects in that uh, film about the threesome. Uh, it's, I think it's actually called Threesome when they yeah, had the sure. threesome in college when Laura Flynn Boyle was ridiculous mm -hmm. and him and Josh Charles and they were the sure. roommates. That was a funny movie. Um, Steven. You got, you got Alec, you got Steven. And William. William, William and Backdraft looked like he was like so good Kevin looking. Kevin Baldwin, Baldwin. Steven whatever. Adam, I don't know where they <laughs> I think because they're Irish and they're all brothers, I think they all have to pool the money. Yeah, I think they all live course. together. No, I don't know. Of course. Um, or even with the Sheens, right? Because when, for my money, I'm putting Emilio Estevez in a movie before I'm putting Martin or Charlie in a movie. Well, young young guns, young guns, young, young guns I Breakfast mean. Club, yeah, uh -oh. uh, Mission Impossible, Working Men, which he made. Working Men is one of my top, might be in my top ten comedy. Love it, liked it. I yeah. thought it was enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, D, he didn't he struck gold with the D two Mighty Ducks franchise. Was being the coach yeah, of the Mighty yeah, Ducks? Yeah, I think so. And then what else was Emilio in? By the way, Mark Sheen. What is it? Repo Man. That's with the other one. That was really yeah. good. Yeah, that was a funny. That was a good movie. Cult following. Yeah, cult following. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Sheen's real last name. I think his name is Ramon Estevez or something yes. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so Emilio's Charlie. Well, some of the guys do that, right? Because what Nicholas Cage is really uh... Coppola. He's a Coppola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Martin Sheen's a pretty normal dude. that grew up in like Dayton, Ohio. Was a big Elvis fan. Um, mm. I, don't, I don't know if he did that for the change the name for the Americanization of it. But anyways, um, mm. Rhett and Miss married to the same woman and had a bunch of kids. So it's a regular dude. Yeah. That's a, the, the, so the people that play like, because he did, he did, oh, uh, not Platoon. What was the word movie? Apocalypse Now. That's got to take something out of you, man. It did. He had a heart attack on set. When they went to the Philippines to shoot that, there was weather, there was hurricanes, mosquitoes, the mosquitoes, size of a Volkswagen Beetle. That's that's the man they go kill you ass. It's like uh, the, what's his face, Frank Lucas going to the jungle with an American gangster. No, he had heart attacks. There was malaria. There was everything that could go wrong in a jungle that went wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to work Martin, with Marlon Martin. Brando. Yeah, he had to work with Marlon Brando and Robert Duvall. Ooh. Charlie, don't surf. <laughs> that wave's gonna break just like that. It's gonna be uh, perfect. Um, but you no, appreciate gotta, acting in a scene where you're just naked in a room, and the director's like, "All right, now be crazy." I haven't done it myself, but uh, if Scott asked me to be naked, not on film, room, no. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked me to be naked in a room and they asked me nicely, I would do it. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, but one more point on on uh, on Sheen is not only did they have a heart attack on that movie. Um, he replaced a fired actor, mm. uh, Harvey Keitel, and somewhere in Harvey there, Keitel. Harvey, there's somewhere uh, around here. Someone's got to have it. No one's shown it. I looked and looked and looked. There's got to be four or five weeks worth of footage of Harvey, Harvey Keitel, Keitel in the lead as uh, as as the colonel. On your list of all-time pimps on film, where do you put Harvey Keitel? In uh, Taxi Driver. <laughs> Probably one, just because he shows up with the white beater and he's a, and he's a pimp to a twelve-year-old Jody Foster. Oh my that God. is so bad. That is so <laughs> that wrong. Is, that is actually that is wrong. You know, there's not a lot of redeeming qualities. There's man. nothing there, so I'm glad he's, that's one. When De Niro shoots him, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, he yeah, had yeah, to go. Yeah. That was it's the a, I, So we talked about art imitating life, imitating art. Yeah, right? and so the lead. The lead uh, female role in there, she actually had a real life stalker, right? Jodie Foster? Yeah. And what she did, didn't she? And that was and the that guy. ended up shooting the president. Yeah. John Hinckley. Yeah, John Hinckley shot Reagan to impress Jodie Foster. And, uh, and I can't verify for sure. But in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, when Leonardo DiCaprio's character sits down and takes the lunch break and he's reading his book, and that's that little child mm -hmm. actor, that little snippy mm -hmm. child actor that everyone's in love with, that's based on Jodie Foster as a mm -hmm. child actor. But yeah, it does imitate, uh, it does imitate life. I, uh, and Jodie Foster, 
I will go back and I watch Silence of the Lambs, and she's yeah. fucking phenomenal. I just, she's a great actor, very smart, um, very well educated. She played it well. That's one of those movies that doesn't show a whole lot, but it does it. They don't have a lot of movies like that anymore. Now they're going to show everything. Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like that uh, mental suspense, right? Yeah. There's an art like form. Playing with each other's minds and heads and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. I'll tell you one of the scariest movies I think I've ever seen in my in my life, especially in the theaters, was Seven. And <sighs> there wasn't anything, there wasn't anything, there was no basement monster or nothing like that. It was just like, that could be somebody, like, on my block. That was when, uh, I, and I love that movie, and there was something that David Fincher, had, he had just broken out of the scene. And I think, and by the way, I think he might become my favorite. He's become probably one of my favorite directors, Fincher. Mm -hmm. um, and when Seven came out, do you notice that, it, number one, he doesn't name the city. So it's supposed to be any yeah, city, yeah. anywhere, USA. It's, it's definitely San Francisco, but it could be it is. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> Chicago and Los Angeles <laughs> and New York. It's definitely those three. Hmm. Um, it's so funny. Uh, and, and, but do you notice, and I, there are parts of that movie I cannot watch, he raises the tension so much oh, yeah. with water in that movie. It wow. drives me crazy. When he goes to, ch to, ch to uh, chase Kevin Spacey down the alley, mm -hmm. and it's raining, and it's pouring, and he's all wet. He's wearing a chintzy leather jacket. Yeah, yeah. And Spacey jumps him off the truck, and, you know, the Bottom thumbs up against him, and then there's water dripping everywhere. It's just like, ah, oh, it's too much to watch. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's raining all the time. I'll tell you what I did notice was that scene where they come into the guy's apartment, and they got all the, uh, the yep. car air fresheners, yep. and you think he's dead, and then he, like, Oh. My booty got tight like I had turbulence in a plane, bro. Oh, when I stood up, I damn near took the whole couch. The, the, the body sitting there, and all of a sudden, just goes, oh, 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 He's alive! He's alive! And the SWAT guys are like pointing their rifles at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't make me SWAT in that situation. <laughs> he's, 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 You're pulling the trigger on murdering his ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going. He's going to have him paralyzed. <laughs> he was, was going to do that. No, oh, that was, that was creepy. Mm -hmm. It's too soon for him. Hey, man, I'm right here. It's too soon for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Morgan Freeman was a badass in that movie too. Oh, and R. Lee Ermey. Oh, who was yeah. In, um, from, uh, yeah, from the war, the other war movie. movie. Full Metal Jack. Full Metal Jack. Played that cop. He was brilliant as that. Yeah. You know, he was in Frighteners, cop. too. Yeah, he's so good as, like, I already see that big yeah. brain of yours work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and then <laughs> someone calls him and he picks up and goes, and goes this isn't even my desk. <laughs> it's up yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah. He's great in that role, man. Army, yeah. army. Oh, army. Oh, the army. You'd appreciate him. He was in the army and he yeah. served as a consultant on Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. And he was so good. Obviously, he got is that one of your favorite? Would you put that there as the all-time best war movie or your favorite war movie? Apocalypse Now. Uh, or any of the ones we named so far. But war movies are really hard because I grew up with fun war movies. You appreciate that it. That glamorized yeah. war and made it look like it was a mm -hmm. cool thing to do, like Kelly's Heroes. It looked like, oh, going to Patton. Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. you're a kid, you watch those and you go, that looks like fun to go yeah. off to war like that. I want to do that. You know, play army and all sure. that stuff. And then the one movie that did, brought it all home for me that says this is not the way to go is um, Pro Saving Private Ryan. It's the one and oh, Platoon yeah. and all those real war movies that explain to you that what it's over. glamorize it? Yeah. That show you the, yeah. some of the ugliness yeah. that can happen, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and you walk out of the movie theater and well, what, what was I thinking? Guys hiding under dead bodies, dudes setting up other dudes, going in just mowing down a village. Oh, I just, uh, so I don't know, I don't have a favorite war movie, I would say right now Saving Private Ryan, because it did that to me, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it gave me one of these, I literally went, it was like, that's right up there, it was like, so I give it credit for that, um, yeah, at the end with Tom Hanks just shooting his little 1911, angels on our shoulders, at the, uh, at, at a whole tank, at a tank, yeah, running out of bullets with the big 45 on mm -hmm. it, yeah, exactly, 
Yeah. I and Tom Sizemore across the I'm all right. I just Oh. I got the wind knocked out of me. I'm all right. You know, he's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all died. Yeah. And they got like Hamburger Hill. There were some good shows that came out about yeah. it, too. But uh, I like the guy that reads the letter from Lincoln, George C. Marshall, the chief of staff, when he goes, so, Dear Miss, I have a letter here. Mm -hmm. This is Bixby from Boston. Bear with me. Dear Mrs. Bixby. <laughs> and he reads the letter and he pulls the stuff and he goes, the boy's alive, <laughs> and we are going to get him the hell <laughs> out of there. Uh, one minute left. I want to go back to a quote that our executive producer, Scott Anderson, gave us to start this yes. uh, to start this show. If I have time and if I have confidence, I can patience. accomplish. Say, say it again. If a man has time and patience, he can accomplish anything. If a man has time and patience, he can accomplish anything. What does that mean to you? And then I'll share what it means to me, and we'll wrap it up. I mean, that's really... That's hard. That's really the only thing you do have. And actually, the sooner you learn to have patience, you do better with your time, right? I would so, like to think so. Yeah, it's just... He will learn patience. That's yeah, what's yeah. going to work, as I said. Well said. I will say this. Uh, this, I would echo your point if you have, if you do have the time to do it and you have the patience to do it, you can accomplish whatever your dreams are, but you have to have faith in yourself. Uh, you have to have faith in others and you have to be able to work your ass off at it. Uh, and like Scott said a couple days ago, you guys must love this or you wouldn't be here. You're here. I'm here. Scott's here. It means we love it. Yeah. Uh, as always, I learned a lot more than I thought I would on one of these shows. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah, hit it. How you get the Carnegie Hall? Practice. <laughs> practice. You practice, I practice. Scott practices more than these people know. Uh, thanks, Knob Creek. You're a good sponsor. Cheers, brother. Uh, Dog and Pony Show. Uh, Chris and Mike at Mike Knight. Knight. At CL Kelsch. Oh, at Mike Knight Comedy. At the Dog and Pony Show. TV. Those are all Instagram numbers. We're at Studio 8. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thanks, Scott.